August 14th, 2018, I was utterly confused. It was my first day at my new school, Mountain Brook Junior High. When my alarm clock rang at 6.30 that morning, I had no idea what was coming. See, for four years before August, I'd attended a small private school where everyone knew each other very well. We were a small community that had a very diverse range of interests. There, I learned to collaborate with people who had different viewpoints on everything, from gun control legislation to favorite colors, we disagreed. But because there weren't enough people to have a diverse range of stereotypical high school social groups, like the jocks or the nerds, we had no other option but to get over our bias and accept each other. And as a result, I wore many hats. I was a volleyball player, a debater, a pianist, a chef, a writer. My dependency on a single identity didn't exist. I couldn't categorize myself because there weren't any categories to choose from. Which is why this shift from 35 people per grade at my old school to 350 people per grade at my new school created a pressure I had never experienced. And after the whirlwind that was my first day, I realized I didn't know my place. So I sought out like-minded people, and naturally, because of my interests, I fell into a single identity, a debater. This identity became my security blanket against an overwhelming outside. Now, I didn't wake, wake up and decide that I would be a debater. But because I was in an environment with hundreds of students, my identity has become more narrow, and my dependency on it is everything. I need to know who my friends are, where to sit at lunch. and In an overwhelming world, it creates that security. But once I fell in with this group, I automatically became biased towards all other social groups. I think the debate program is the most important program at the school, and I'm pretty sure many more people think the football program is more important. I'm biased towards my friends. If you're sitting at my table alongside my group, I automatically assume we will get along. We don't assume the same of those in other groups. Now, I recognize that this is relatively low-grade bias, but it's true on a larger scale, and this pattern as humans persists. We all have stories of when we have protected our group, our security blanket, our identity. Protecting our group often involves creating unfair generalizations of others. They seem small, but they aren't. It results in the bias based on the presumed differences amongst those identity groups. But it's completely natural. Our brains are constantly dealing with a huge influx of information, just like me on my first day. As a result, our brains have to organize and sort all of this data into categories. The volleyball team, the robotics team, the debaters. These categories are called semantic neighborhoods and are vital to human survival. But one of the adverse consequences of this is the fact that we create stereotypes to fit people into confining boxes. For example, if I meet three rude people from New York, I start to believe that all New Yorkers are rude because I carry baggage based on the first three, and it fits a generalization. Or I avoid all spiders instead of taking the time to learn which ones are harmless and which ones aren't. If our brains instinctively create this bias, is there no way to reverse this tendency? I don't think so. The logical solution to preventing categorization should be more education. Learning about more types of people, or spiders, should break these semantic neighborhoods. And that's the solution that most authors in the past have isolated. That's the solution to combat bias that we've taught future generations in the classroom for centuries. Yet, we are the most divided we've ever been. Awareness and education is ineffective in the current flow because now we live in a world with unlimited information. We are a digitally connected community that knows no bounds. When I switched to a larger school, my bias became more prevalent, even though more people, more information, should have reduced this bias. And what I've learned is, actually, more information is counterproductive. It causes us to narrow our scope and become more dependent on a sole identity. 
when we have so many news channels and radio stations to choose from, we have to find our place. This forces us to pick and choose what to listen and what to watch based on where we think we personally fit in. Finding our place means clinging to artificial characteristics that be then become our perception of ourselves. In the modern world, we don't just categorize others anymore. We are forced to categorize ourselves. University of Maryland professor Liliana Mason examined political survey data and found that by far the largest predictor of social distance was how we identify ourselves, not where we actually stand on the issues. Breaking these social barriers has to be a prerequisite before education and awareness techniques can truly be successful rather than counterproductive. And breaking down those barriers happens two ways. The first is by recognizing the weight your identity factor holds in your decision making. Making sure that you're aware of the factor instead of it being subconscious will inherently decrease the weight it holds and you'll be able to see how it interacts with your decisions on a small scale. The second is to eliminate that factor in certain environments. This can be going out of your comfort zone in any way, from going to a new restaurant to just changing the television channel. For me, it's sitting at a different lunch table every once in a while, or going to a friend's youth group of a different religion than my own. Eliminating that identity factor is crucial to the future of our globe. If we don't, our world will continue to spiral down a seemingly hopeless path. In a world where the identity factor holds so much weight, our perspective is us and them. And human nature is to discriminate against them to enhance our own group. Don't believe me? Pick up any history textbook. Almost every world conflict boils down to identity versus identity. So rip off that security blanket. Have a conversation. Look at both sides of the coin. Change the television channel. Sit at a, at a different table at lunch every once in a while. Do something that takes you out of your comfort zone and reduces the weight that identity factor holds, not something that will entrench you further. We have to stop dividing before we can truly start solving. Thank you all so much.